Daniel here, driving dragons. Just figured that I would roll out a quick video today. Wasn't really planning on it, but it's a great day for a drive in central Alabama, so I figured I'd take a little crack at it. Didn't have anything really planned, so I kind of decided I'd talk about Rule Zero a little bit. For those who don't know, Rule Zero is that ubiquitous rule that's present in every tabletop role-playing game in some version or another and it essentially goes that the game master, dungeon master, keeper, referee, whatever you call them, has the final say on all rules decisions. You got buddies who want to talk about rules is written, rules is written. Guess what? The number one rule that's written, they call it rule zero for a reason because it comes before rule one, is that at the end of the day, the guy running the game is the person who is in charge and the person who has the final say. You gotta be consistent with that because your players are gonna rely on consistency for developing their characters, for developing their behaviors. And if you're arbitrary or you contradict yourself on a regular basis or you're not clear in the way you make rulings, you're gonna end up screwing up their game because they're gonna do things based on the way you've ruled in the past and you're gonna change it and it's not gonna work and they're gonna be angry because they can't even figure out how to work in your game. So, let's start on the broad scale. There's two real big places that I think of when I think of the concept of rule zero. First is in the broad scale, and I think this is the far more important way. When I say the broad scale, I'm talking about thematic changes. You have a theme in your game, for instance. And when I say a theme, I'm not talking, oh, it's Dungeons and Dragons, so we're doing high fantasy. Or it's Cyberpunk, so we're doing cyberpunk. I'm not talking about that kind of thing. I'm not even talking about the kind of theme where it's like, oh, we're playing in this particular campaign setting. I'm talking the overarching theme of the game. We are playing cyberpunk, but we're a crew of high-end burglars. We break in to the highest society, the richest corpos in Night City. We break into their fancy safes and their all their high-tech security systems, and we, and we get in and get out. Do we know how to fight? Yeah, we know how to fight. But the theme of the game is we try not to get caught. All right? So we make rulings based on that kind of thing. And that's going to be things like the most, uh, the easiest one I can think of is you see a lot of people in some of these groups talk about, oh, I want to do a high seas adventure. And I want to know, how do you handle being the ship? And what I'm real hard on on that is, we are not going to be talking about profession sailor check, or rigging skills, or piloting skills for the ship itself. We're not going to be looking at roles for that. Everything that's handled within the theme, the rules are going to be very broad, very pared down. It's going to be checks to solve specific problems on the ship, not shipwright checks to solve all the problems. A, because you don't want one skill becoming super powerful or one ability becoming super, super powerful in your game because what you've done is created a system where that one check is used for so much that you have to dump all your points into it or you have to gear all your feats and all your everything else to it, what you're going to you, what you're gonna do is you're going to be very broad on it. You're going to be very specific with checks and with skills and with feats and with you know class abilities and stuff like that outside of that. But, hey, I'm using rule zero here and there isn't even a shipcraft check. There, is, there isn't even a sailing check because you're all sailors. You're all skilled at being sailors. You're all skilled at different parts of it. You're all skilled at different aspects of it. And this is going to be, the, because this is a major theme of the game, if I'm breaking into high, high society apartments and these super high tech defensive banks and uh, you know, trying to get into these facilities to get the jewels or to get the program or whatever, I don't want you just walking up to every door rolling lockpick check, lockpick check, lockpick check. That's not what you want. You want that keypad to have a, a way for you to get through it, a couple of ways for you to get through it in the game, and we're going to figure it out. We're going to work at it as a team. We're going to. This is part of the theme of the game. However, if you go, you go broke, and the whole 
thing is busto and now the bad guys are rolling out, you want to super streamline the ability to handle gunfights or, you know, running away like chases and stuff like that. And it's like, okay, yeah, cool. Make, make this athletics check to see if we get away. That's not the theme of the game. You want to take the theme, expand it out, use your discretion, use that rule zero to par those, to, to really smooth those rules out so you spend a lot of time in the theme and then those set pieces where the theme is broken because, like I said, your, your, your thief crew got busted and now they got to get out. You want that to go super quick. You want that to be snap, 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 one shot, one shot, one shot, quick rolls, quick moves, quick decisions. So maybe you're going to par something down that would normally be three or four checks, three or four rolls, and you're going to par it down into one. That is making changes to suit your theme. Now, those in general should not necessarily be on the fly. Those should be things that you take care of right up front. You know, even session zero, you kind of outline, hey, here's how this is going to work on the boat. You know, we're not going to be doing sailor profession checks. We're going to be solving problems. Um, you know, and then when we get into a sword fight, it's just going to be a regular sword fight. So the second way is on the microcosm. And that is when you have to make a snap decision, when you have to make a decision that's part of the game. Now, sometimes these are going to be things that you need to make a quick decision. You may later go back and revise it, and you need to make sure that you inform everybody why you made the decision and why you're changing it. This can be something like, hey, we don't want to slow the game down by looking up a rule or by doing a whole bunch of calculations. So you're going to go ahead and make the roll, and I'm going to make the call. But then when I go back and look at the rules, maybe there's a better way to do it, and I'm going to be super, super careful about how I do that because I want to make sure that I'm once again consistent for my players that they expect it. They don't come to rely on some ruling I made one time that was done just to make the game go faster. But that consistency is key and that's where you shut down your rules lawyer types. If they want to argue with you about the rules, you just got to tell them, hey man, set it's rule zero. I'm making this ruling to make this game go quicker, easier, more fun for everybody, and we can talk about it later offline. So that's where it is. You know, on the small scale, you need to make sure you're consistent. You need to try to make logical decisions that fit where you are in your game. If the game is in a slow part, maybe you do do some digging and some looking up and make things a little slower. If your game's in a in a combat situation, you, you don't want to spend a lot of time doing stuff. Maybe you say, hey, make the roll, and then if it's close in the gray area between, yeah, we know you succeeded, no, we know you didn't, maybe do some a little bit more digging, a little bit more work. But at the end of the day, what you really want to do is you just want to keep consistency and clear communication with your players when, when using Rule Zero, and then always have those big thematic changes. Make the rules fit your game and the feeling and the idea that you want to portray Make it fit your story and help it make your world more real. That's all I got for you today. Like, comment, subscribe. I look forward to hearing from some folks, and I'll talk to you guys again soon.